He's been in San Francisco for three months. Hyunjun Park's daily run takes him past the Golden Gate Bridge. He always has his phone along to record speed and distance. Park is a scientist after all. We're tracking everything we do with our phones and all of that has to be stored somewhere and a lot of that gets stored in cloud storage and that gets backed up into various different forms of data storage mediums. And some people even say that we're going to eventually run out of the material to make those conventional storage mediums. Like memory sticks, hard drives or magnetic tape. In just a few years, it'll take about 10 billion of these to store all the data humanity has generated. But if you store that in DNA, each of us carries around enough DNA in our bodies to store all of that information. And that's exactly what Hyunjin Park and his colleague Nathaniel Roquet want to do, store huge amounts of data on DNA. They want to use enzymes to reconfigure the molecule's building blocks into patterns that record specific information. So this tube contains a, a poem by Robert Frost called The Road Not Taken. It's uh, about a kilobyte of information. And uh, this, this liquid <laughs> contains a poem. It contains mil millions of copies of that poem, actually. Here's how it works. It starts with the line, two roads diverged in a yellow wood. Each one of these letters, even the spaces in between the words, um, have an 8-bit number. So what we do here is we encode it in DNA. So we turn this string of zeros and ones into a string of A, G's, C's, T's, and A's. Now that we have this mapping, which is done by the software that we're developing, we actually build the DNA. And the DNA is transporting information right now? The DNA is carrying the information, so we want to store this. So what if you want to get your information back? How do you do that? Um, you send it in for sequencing, or if you have a sequencer yourself, you don't need to send it in, you can just do it. So when you sequence, you read each one of these nucleotides and figure out which of the A, G, C, T it is. And if you, if you encoded it reliably, um, the, the string that you originally encoded should be the same as you read out. The researchers are enthusiastic about the advantages they say the system brings capacity, the, the amount of information you can store in a really small volume. Um, I can think of reliability, so DNA, if you, if you freeze dry it, it lasts um, a very, very long time, potentially tens of thousands of years. That's why we can, um, you know, sequence the, the genome of a woolly mammoth that was frozen in ice for like 60,000 years. Um, and portability, so DNA is really easy to copy. Humanity has been storing information for thousands of years on analog media like stone tablets, paper or vinyl, or digitally, like the Internet Archive in San Francisco is doing with millions of books and recordings. But there's a problem. Every technology eventually grows obsolete. Fifty years down the road, somebody laughs about DNA storage. I'd be happy with that because that means we succeeded and turned DNA into a major storage medium. But that goal is still a long way down the road. For now, the two are still spending 16 hours a day at their biotech startup, trying to make it happen. They've turned research into a business plan, and every week they have to tell their mentors how far they've come. Focusing on the science this week, and uh, we're happy to announce that we encoded our first kilobyte. A success, even though competitors like Microsoft have already managed to store more data than that. The young researchers think the software giant's method will prove too expensive because it builds its storage molecules step by step. They say that's like putting together patterns on a Rubik's cube just one piece at a time. Our method uses a different approach. We build a bunch of prefabricated DNA, so DNA that's already there, but it's all in the same state. Um, but this state is meaningless. And then we apply combinational uh, enzymatic reactions to it to reconfigure the DNA and change it into the message that we want to encode. That's much cheaper, say the researchers, but they still have to convince investors to keep paying the bills until, they hope, 
their technology takes off.